your villagers. The master possesses them. It mustn't hurt them. Hurt guards, though. They seek out an object of great power. A crucifix once stood here, but the mayor took it. Find a replacement and see how the church should really look. The rune key is held aloft by the flow of water from the fountain. You may have to wait for the next drought. of Mr. Shanks, landlord of the Troll's Head. To clean the statue, lower the pedestal. apart. If we don't find the shadow artifact, Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the demons for the next millennium. Thank <laughs> you. 
History of Galomir, Volume 1. During the dark time that was Galomir's not too distant past, it was King Peregrine who thwarted Zerok the Necromancer and his plan to enslave the land. Zerok, once the king's mage, had fallen out of favor with the ruler for conducting outlandish experiments on the bodies of the dead. It was said that deep within Peregrine Castle, the dead were restless. The dead are to be honored, not kept as the playthings of alchemists, declared King Peregrine as he banished Zerok from the castle. All of Zerok's living dead were routed out and destroyed. Zerok, being an unforgiving soul, went into hiding and vowed to wreak his revenge on the king. History of Galamir, Volume 2. Rumors of ill-doing and dark deeds abounded through the land of Galamir. It was whispered that Zerok had employed the aid of shadowy demons to help build a vast castle. Under the cover of night, Zerok's dark army spilled forth from their corrupt haven. The army marched south across the Silver Mountains and through the Silver Woods. Soon afterwards, even the pumpkin lands belonged to Zerok. The folk of Gallows Town cried out for help. Save us, good King Peregrine. Retaliation was swift and violent. King Peregrine's forces, led by the brave Sir Fortescue, drove Zerok's army back from Gallows Town. Oh, there was much rejoicing, but the war was not yet over. History of Galomir, Volume 3. News that Zerok's army had now taken the floodlands caused much concern. From this vantage point, Zerok could march west to take the enchanted forest. This sacred place would prove a bitter defeat if it fell into the hands of the evil sorcerer. It was Sir Dan Fortescue who once again led the king's militia to rid the demon host from the land. Yet the evil wizard was cunning and had prepared an ambush. Titanic battle ensued, of which history has never seen the like. It is said that the day would have gone to Zerok, but for the skill and valor of one man. Fortescue led the charge deep into the massed ranks of the undead, felling Zerok's bodyguard, the fearful Lord Kodok, and before finally succumbing to his own mortal wounds, slew the traitorous sorcerer with a mighty sweep of his sword. <laughs> History of Galomir, Volume 4. The forces of evil were destroyed, but at a terrible price. None but a handful of the king's militia returned from that field. Galamir lost a whole generation of young men that day, including Canny Tim, the legendary crossbowman, and Fortescue's second in command, who fell in the first volley of arrows. Zerok's body was never found, though if it lies unmourned in an unmarked grave, then no one in Galamir would shed a tear. The shadow demons that had fallen under Zerok's banner were unnatural creatures that did not belong in the world of mortal men. The king declared that they be banished, entombed under the pure earth of the enchanted earth. Imprisoned within an impregnable box of the king's design, the demons were buried deep underground. Their tomb was sealed with a magical device that has since come to be known as the shadow Artifact. <laughs> Tourist Guide to Galamir, Part 1. The land of Galamir is a wondrous land of breathtaking sights and adventure. If it's beauty you are looking for, be sure to check out the sights of the enchanted forest. Scale the heights and see the nests of giant dragon birds. 
Seek out weird and wonderful plant life. Go ooh and ah at the sight of baby dragon toads splashing about in the crystal clear ponds. Why not take a walk through the Pumpkin Valley? Pumpkin is Galomir's favorite dish, and about now the valley is just bulging under the weight of young podlings awaiting harvest. <laughs> Tourist Guide to Galamir, Part 2. If it's mystery you're looking for, then the seasoned adventurer should travel to the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Yes, this is the fortress from which the fabled King Peregrine once hailed. It is said that the king's crown was lost in the dungeons below the castle, and that the ghost of the region himself now haunts these cold stone passageways. Spooky. Why not take the swamps and seek out the mythical town of Mellowmead? This place was once said to be a place of fantastical arcane alchemy, but an age has passed since it was consumed by the murky swamps. Perhaps great treasure awaits any adventurer that can locate its watery resting place. <laughs> Heroes from History a retrospective. Chapter 1. In addition to being the strongest man who ever lived, Stanier Ironhewer was unsurpassed in his skill as a blacksmith. He was equally happy pounding on his anvil at home as he was pounding on someone's head in battle. It was said that his only fear was the end of the village smithy as the focus of manufacture in favor of more centralized units. <laughs> as if. Chapter 2. Born a humble peasant to one of the nomadic tribes from the Eastlands, Blood Manoth Skullcleaver gathered an army of horsemen and swept over half the civilized world. When he finally died, attempting a single-handed attack on a garrison in the north while armed only with a spike on his helmet, he was the richest and most powerful peasant of his day. Chapter 3. Carl Sterngard spent most of his formative years under siege at his family castle. With his impregnable magic shield, Sterngard's motto was, The best form of attack is defense. Sadly, his shield couldn't protect him against poor eating habits, and he died during a post-battle feast while swallowing a large sausage he had failed to chew. Chapter 4. Truly the hero's hero, Woden the Mighty was fearless, single-minded, and uncompromising. Unbeaten in combat, he inspired raw fear in friends and enemies alike, <laughs> not to mention in close family members and pets. Chapter 5. Trained from birth in all forms of combat, Imanzi Shongama was the warrior queen of a tribe of Amazons. The bold and the beautiful Shongama banished all males from her territory, except the handful she kept on to mow the lawns of her people. Chapter 6. A full-time mother and homemaker, Megwin Stormbinder had to defend her settlement from barbarian raiders while the menfolk were away on a hunting trip. She fought off repeated attacks, armed only with a pitchfork and a rolling pin, and with one arm holding her baby. Legend has it that the gods, impressed by her indomitable courage, intervened and added thunderbolts to her arsenal. She won the battle with a couple of bolts to spare on her husband when he finally returned. Chapter 7. 
Dirk Steadfast was a fearsome opponent thanks to his magic sword and a firmly held belief that only women defend themselves. Real men are always on the attack. He was a friend and contemporary of Karl Sterngard and was with him even to the end. It was whilst Steadfast was explaining his views on Sterngard's shield during a feast that the latter had his tragic and inexplicable accident. <laughs> Chapter 8. Descended from the finest centaur bloodstock, Raven Hooves the Archer was the last prince of his people. A proud and haughty aristocrat, he was an accomplished hunter, sportsman, duelist, playboy, raconteur, and three times derby winner. Chapter 9. Captain of the militia in the time of King Peregrine, Sir Daniel Fortescue found fame when he killed the renegade wizard, Zerok. A career soldier raised in the royal household, he was adored by the men under his command and renowned for his loyalty to Galamir. It was said that Fortescue was always destined for greatness. With his square jaw, steely gaze, and thick shock of hair as black as raven's wings, Oh, he looked every inch the hero. <laughs> to whom it may concern, I must make haste, for Xerox men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is the key to a key. I used the cross to make the attached cast. Then I had it destroyed. It is my hope that this cast falls into the hands of a just and good hero. Signed, the town mayor. To whom it... <laughs>
Blacksmith's Monthly. Old man Willie Green of Gallows Town was awarded Smithy of the Season by our readers. His outstanding casts have produced many intricate and hard-wearing iron goods and sculptures. Willie only uses the finest of metals in his work and is particularly noted for his magnificent busts. <laughs> Old man Willie was quoted as saying, I, when I get pumping on me bellows, there's no stopping me. It's all in the rhythm, up and down, up and down. I've always been inspired by the stories of Stanya Iron Hewer, <laughs> the greatest smithy there ever was. Dear sir and madam, on my travels across Galamere, I have come across many mysterious and enchanting finds. However, that which filled me with deepest dread was that bully boy Zarok will stop at nothing to retrieve this item. I fear that he already knows that it is I who possess it. Yours fearfully, the town mayor. Thank <laughs> you. 
capture that greedy profiteer, the town mayor. Take him to the asylum dungeons. Give the fat boy a good going over. Locate the shadow artifact. Bring me back something nice. Forth like a supernatural yo-yo. Maybe the master will make it harder to find those magic egg cups. Fortescue, you are back on the battlefield, yeah? This is good. People say to me, Sturngard, what do you think of this sword or that axe? But I say to them, nein! Modern warfare is a question of science, the science of shields. <laughs> I think maybe you should take my shield, yeah? It is magic, Herr Fortescue. Some say it is better to have a magic sword than a magic shield, but I say to you that this is rubbish! So long as you use it properly, the shield will make you invincible! This is the Garden of Zerok. Nothing here is as it first seems. To leave this maze, you must first seek out the one called Jack of the Green. So Fortescue. My name is Jack of the Green. I am the master of riddles, and this maze is my domain. You are free to leave, but only once you've answered four riddles. Puzzles so fiendishly difficult, so perplexingly complex, that no man has ever solved them. Ha ha ha. Now, try my first riddle. <clears throat> At night they come without being fetched. By day they are lost. 
without being stolen. But my star riddle was but a trifle. I always like to begin with an easy one. Return hither. You will not find my next conundrum so simple. I live for laughter. I live for the crowd. Without it, I am nothing. Return in haste, Sir Knight, for I wish to see the despair on your face when you hear my next cryptic puzzler. <laughs>
Did you spot my bluff? I pretended that riddle was hard, but in truth it was obviously an elephant. This time, however, I almost pity you. The answer to my next vexing enigma has eluded the finest minds of a whole generation. Come to me. I tolerate the moon and stars, I can't abide the sun. Banish me with torchlight and you'll see me turn and run. Very well. Outrageous as it seems, my vast intellect has been matched by your badly decomposed brain. Return at once and I shall give you your prize. You think you're so clever, don't you? 
Here you are, Sir Trevor Clogs. I grant you free passage through my maze. Find your own way out. Oh, Danielle, I've got something here I can give you, but I've no idea what it is. Do you fancy a little gamble, Mike?
am I glad to see you. That Zarek tried to force me to hand over the Shadow Artifact. He means to release the demons from their tomb under the enchanted forest. But I said to him, I said, You can't touch me, you lanky windbag. I'm the mer. Aye, that told him. But then he had me locked up in here with all these nutters. Oh, it's been terrible. I haven't managed to get a word of sense out of anyone in weeks. <coughs> right. Well, I'll see myself out, thanks. You have a good look around, lad. Zarek's left some stuff lying about that I think you might find useful. <coughs> Mr. Fortiske, I want to talk with you. If this Zorak's so bad, why'd you get to go back? Why'd you of all people, Fortiske? It should be I, blood monath, skull cleaver. When I lived, always I had a pile of slain strewn around me. You! You spend most of your time organizing and changing of the guard and playing croquet with the king! <laughs> Still, I lend you my axe. You a swing her, you a throw her. She thirsts for a slaughter as much as I. Drink deep of demon blood, my proud beauty. <laughs> 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 